Fish Bigger Quest. We made it. <laughs> kind of gassed it in at the end of the year. But we're here. If you're here to learn about varnish, this actually is a really great video for you. If just for the playlist and the links in the description below, because that is super curated content. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He is going to read questions, because this is live. When we do this, we do this live, and the community comes in, they ask questions about varnish and things. Um, so if you're here on the replay, that's why all the shenanigans. And he also follows me around with cameras and makes sure that I know what you guys are asking, because I'm not allowed to have the chat. Nope, nope. Nope. No more chat for you. Big Art Quest covers um, some of the more drilled down concepts that we get in art, but we try to do it in a way that makes them fundamentally accessible and easy, which I kind of like. I like taking complicated art stuff and making it easier. Yeah. Though some of it, boy, it's really like pushing a boulder over a line to make it easy, and varnish is one of those things. Oh, yeah. Which is why I've been dreading it, dreading it, dreading it all year. <laughs> dreading it. Okay. Okay. So I hope everybody's doing great. Yes. What we're going to basically talk about is those top 10 questions that you have about varnish. Um, cover areas where you may be sabotaging your success. Mm -hmm. And also make sure you have access to the correct information mm -hmm. that's out there. And also the correct links that are out there. And help. Because those things all exist. Oh, yeah. That way, you know, you haven't worked days and days and days on something you're now at the end you've got to finish it you go to varnish it and then you ruin the base mm, yeah. because that is the worst totally it really is it just i it's happened to me it's happened to every artist i know and it just is sucked tacular mm -hmm. just that is the exact word for <laughs> it <laughs> so you, ha you have some <laughs> solutions for this i do I have solutions for many many things many. and then i just have the basic sort of artist guidelines first one is is do you have to varnish? Do, do you? I get asked that constantly. Well, that's a good question. It do, is. It's do a you really have, good question. Do you have to varnish? Uh, you absolutely have to varnish acrylic painting. Why? Um, because it's a, thir I never say this right, thermogenic plastic. It's a thir thermogenic uh, polymer. Therm yes. And basically what this means is that at certain temperatures it's very soft and pliable, and at other temperatures it's rigid. And because your painting is not likely to live in a temperature-controlled vault and a humidity-controlled vault, it probably will go through several stages mm -hmm. of softness. And during its softer stages, it's like a Swiffer. Oh, yeah. You can literally watch dust particles like float That's, towards your acrylic it, painting and go... Stop. And, and that has a lot. I mean, there's so many things in action here that have to do with like ionic charge and like how like dust is attracted to things and like how porous it is. So I think some of what we have trouble with in acrylic painting is the basis, a couple of art myths mm -hmm. that we have. One is that oils are toxic mm -hmm. and that acrylics are non-toxic. Neither one of these things are fundamentally completely true. Mm -hmm. There are products in oil painting, um, especially when you get into the cheap, inexpensive um, solvents, mm -hmm. that can be very harmful. Obviously, yeah. though, a cold-pressed linseed oil sourced by monks, and yes, that does exist. Uh -huh. Not that toxic. Yeah. <laughs> right? So <laughs> there are completely, I mean, like, you could buy stuff like this at Restoration Hardware. It smells so good, products oh, yeah. and oils. But then they get incredibly costly because they have to be made in this sort of old world by hand fashion. Right. Um, acrylic painting is pretty much non-toxic mostly. Mm -hmm. Right? Because once the paint is dry, everything is sort of trapped in this thermogenic polymer. But it has stages, and of course, products for this have fumes. Th th it's thermoplastic. It's thermoplastic. Thermoplastic polymer. Thermoplastic there polymer. You go. I can't say this. No, it's life. okay. It's 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 science. It's science. But the the whole end up point of this is, is that each each medium, mm -hmm. whatever you're painting with, just has properties. Yes. Has has quirks. It's it's got quirks, and this is my favorite medium, and I have really embraced the quirks. And one of the quirks is, it's a Swiffer. Yes. And therefore, if you say we're to not varnish it, and as um, one of my fellow YouTubers and first supporter, Starry Hilder, pointed out, and your husband guts a deer next to it and gets blood <laughs> on it, it's really challenging to clean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but <clears throat> Which I did look up how you would clean that. 
Because yeah. there's an article on it. Yeah, which is, which was... You have to lick a Q-tip, and, and you just very slowly over the next six months reclaim your painting. Because apparently the best solvent for cleaning art is spit. Huh. I'm just saying the CIC says this, so that's the Conservators Institute of Canada. Which, by the way, I gave you a link to. Oh, yeah. Right? If you have some crazy conservation questions, then contact. Mm-hmm. And they actually would be the people who know. They're the people that the paint materials go work with. And there's a couple conservation societies that the paint materials companies work with to talk about varnish. Because you can't say anything to a conservator to get them more hopped up and freaked out <laughs> and all kinds of opinionated than varnish. So Terry actually bring, has, has asked a really good question. Hmm. She says, should you use uh, spray varnish outside? Because I have Krylon acrylic varnish, and I've always sprayed it outside. Yeah. So, yeah. The Dude, if I did this inside, I'd be laying down in vertigo. So there's an ingredient. I don't, it's in tire cleaners, and it seems to be in this. There's something in certain propellants yeah, so just, that I have vertigo from. And I don't know what it is, but I, I know when it happens. And just in general, <laughs> it's a good idea to have a a, 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 a respirator or, a, or a, a, you know, a, a breathing filter that's rated for spray paints. Yeah. And you, for, for, paint, yeah. for painting with. And, and here's what it is. All of these things will, they tell you, I mean, this thing is not like messing with you. It says danger, extremely flammable. Vapors may cause flash fires. Mm -hmm. That sounds fun. See, now when I say your painting won't explode, see, you thought it was being funny, but there's this point where your painting can explode. <laughs> so, contexts are under pressure. Vapor is harmful. Carefully read cautions on the back panel, and most of this is cautions. That doesn't make it not a good product. Here's the thing about varnish. So as artists, we're fighting a bunch of things with varnish. And mm -hmm. the first thing that we're fighting with varnish is, say you're a person and you have a lot of cats and you love your cats. Cats somehow know that you're varnishing a painting and they will come and do that little fluff shake thing and release an extra load of fur <laughs> yes. right as the varnish is super tacky. So you're really sort of like trying to deal with the conditions that you can control and, you know, vapors and health warnings and all of this. And so the first thing I ever introduced to you guys is a product called Gloss Medium and Varnish. Actually, I just was, okay, so I was just going to ask about that. Now, there, there was somebody who was asking, can you use just gloss medium, not gloss medium and varnish? But no. Can you use just gloss medium? Gloss medium is thermal, thermal, thermal. It is a thermoplastic polymer. Thermoplastic polymer. <laughs> and, and what so, gloss medium is, what the mediums and gels are, is thermoplastic polymers. So they're just basically different bodies. In lakes. other words, you know, is it a heavy yeah. body, is it a soft body, different finishes, different viscosities, different transparencies that you can add to your paint right. to change its properties. A finish, a sealant, and a varnish. This is how you take this thermoplastic, mm -hmm. this the ah, thermo the thermoplastic polymer. polymer. Yes. High five. I knew it was going to be a thing today. Thermoplastic polymer and how you seal it from the world it lives in. Yes. Right. And there's a difference between a sealant and a varnish. Because mm. you can have sealants. And you can have varnishes. And oh, they're and, not the same thing. And, and there's a whole bunch of differences between varnish. And when people are like, ask me varnish questions, why I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's so many answers to this question. Again, made a playlist for you. It's in the iCard. Yeah. Put links down below of things you should read. So, yeah, varnishes yeah. Are, are one of those things where it's very simple on the surface, where there, there's some basic rules you need yeah. to follow. But it's like it's any other medium, you can deep. do a lot with it. It's, it's deep, very complex. Deep, deep water. So yeah. I'm going to talk about my gloss medium and varnish. Yeah, this is really, it is a varnish because it finishes a painting. But it is not a varnish also. Um, Liquitex kind of does this sometimes. It labels things creatively. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, I mean, they'll like say it's like ivory black, but really it's bone black. Right. So right. They're, they're, they're perhaps using... Uh, they're, they're saying you can finish your painting with this. But most varnishes should be able to be reactivated. The point of having a varnish from a conservative standpoint is that so you finish your painting, you create something called an isolation coat, which I would say this is more of. Right. Right. And then you finish with a varnish. Right. And then if anything happens to the varnish, you can remove that layer and reapply it. Gotcha. Ah, 
See, sealant, varnish. Sealants, it's done. It's one and done. This is one and done. You, I always get heartbroken when you guys ask me questions about this, like something went wrong with this, because I'm like, oh, it's done. It's kind of done. You can do another coat. Right. But sometimes you... to help repair it, but really it's not coming off. Varnish, right? Right. Can come off. Now, so let's go back to that. When you're ta- let's hold up both those things. So when you say one and done, what you mean is, is that when you put a coat down, if it gets any bubbles or hairs or things in it. Well, and actually then, and then, then this I think is a Liquitex thing. Cause I don't have a lot of the good removable varnishes. What I need to show you guys is on the back of the bottle. Okay. All right. So most so, of them oh, will oh, tell oh, you this. Let me get my button over there. So you see, this oh, is Liquitex's patented dot system. There you go. Okay. Right. And this scale tells you to what degree it is a preparation, a paint, or a finish. This gotcha. is all the way over to the right means you're done. Okay. This tells you if it's permanent or removable. So again, this is a this was a Liquitex issue, and it's matte varnish, but it's telling you, dude, when it when it goes smidge on. removable. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I love when they bring the dot over a smidge. It means that there's some condition that you could get this thing off, but it's it doesn't it's not gonna be fun. Right. For you or the person restoring your painting, this tells you whether it is matte or gloss, and see how it's over a smidge. Yeah. It has a little bit of gloss to it, but barely. A little bit of shimmer just to touch. Right? And this tells you if it's transparent or opaque. Notice that this has moved quite a bit over. This is very important for later. <laughs> opaque would be a very non-functioning varnish. Okay. Matte varnish okay. is not transparent. So and therein tilt, lies its problem. Can you tilt that up a bit more? What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. They're saying they're having a little hard time. Seeing. No, hold on. You stay there. I'm going to come adjust camera. Okay. You come adjust camera. All right. Thank you. Sorry for this. Don't just, don't give it a thumbs down. We'll focus. Okay. All right. There you go. You can kind of see it. All right. I'm going to pull, no, uh, you know, add some focus to that. the gloss over here. Same thing. This is, this is a finish. It's not all the way to the dot on the finish like this one is. It's, a little, it's maybe less of a finish. But and it's also mostly really super permanent. It's pretty much gloss. And it's much closer to transparent. Knowing this about a product tells you how to use it, interestingly enough. Okay. Right? And it'll tell you it's a permanent varnish. Right. Now, by that mean, it, it's, you're it's not, getting, not it getting it. It's not a removable varnish. It, I use, so here's my thing. There's some fantastic varnishes out there. Yeah. Um, every time I open a can of varnish or jar mm-hmm. varnish, um, to the degree it is a better varnish, I take that vertigo risk. <laughs> right. And since I don't know what my ingredient is, I have to sort of use John as a canary in the coal mine. And I don't like to wait for John to varnish anything. So I sort of have these products so I don't have to. Right. Because I, I'm lazy. doesn't make them the best products by any means. It just means that they're, they're what works for me in my current lifestyle, my studio. Right. And so, so that's how I make those decisions. But like I can, I can kind of outside with a thing on my face and stuff, spray this. Yeah, so you have to push that up a little bit. I'm pretty zoomed in so they can see that. Right. No, that's right. Yeah. You, down, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and you can see, like, stuff about it. And it, look, it, it contains a whole bunch of terrible stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Delayed effects from long-term exposure. So you got to use... Brain the, damage, but, inter, intentional misuse by deliberately concentrating and healing the contents. Can be hard. Yeah, Boy! No. People, no eyes, no mouth, no ears. <laughs> Keep not, all the stuff out of your don't body. Don't huff paint. <laughs> don't huff paint. So I'm going to talk to you about something. I have okay, two finishes here. I'm zoomed here. in there. I'm super zoomed in. I'm coming. Okay. I'm zoom that all right. Okay. So, so this is just something to think about. Is like, um, like there's MSA varnish by Golden, and it is by far the superior, most archival product. There are serious paint conservancy companies, companies that are about being for artists, for conservation, for the creation of fine art. And they create products that are to this end Mm -hmm. and they're amazing. Yeah. But again, sometimes the better product is not necessarily friendly to me, might not be friendly to you. You may be fine. John, he can be in there with the CA glue and all the finishes and all of that. With the, he's fine. Well, I, you know, it's, I'm not fine. It, what I just say is that uh, I, I go and get a. Uh, he does. I wear respirators. But all even the sometimes time. with the respirator, I'm it, not fine. Yeah. The CA glue, which is basically super crazy glue, it's super super glue, for used in woodworking sometimes mm-hmm. when you're turning pens, even with the respirator may not be enough for me. Yeah. Oh. So here we go. You okay. guys remember Grisai Apple? Yes. 
can we see the different finishes here? Oh, can yeah, you can. On the left side, it's shiny, much shinier than the right hand side. Okay. So this is a matte finish, and this is a gloss finish. Oh, yeah. I'm going to hold up an unfinished, you know, this painting has no yep, finish on it at all. That. Yeah. Right? So here's matte, and here's gloss, right? Just one coat. One, yep. And you can see the differences between these two finishes. Why do we varnish? Why bother? Besides sealing it because it's a Swiffer, there's some other reasons to varnish. To give it the different finishes? Well, here's something interesting you can see that happens in a painting, what right? Jump? When we're here. Can you see right here, because I've, I've varnished this size, but yeah. can you see the difference between the finish of this part of the paint and this part of the paint? Well, uh, can you see some of it yeah, being you, shiny you and can, some of it being flatter? That, yeah, you can see that the, the blue, the dark blue, is much shinier than the other parts of the paint. Right. Over here, I have some dark blue and some of the... See how they're the same? Oh, yeah. They all are kind of shimmering the, the same. So the other point of varnish is unification. Sometimes our products will be gloss. Sometimes our products will be matte. Sometimes our products will have different finishes or refraction rates. And we may want, for the finish of the painting, things to be unified, to pull mm -hmm. together. We may want to deepen and, and, and create a real dramatic color finish. Um, we may just want to unify painting. So beyond protecting the art, this is how we unify the art. So a lot of times when you guys are like, how, you know, I've got some of it is not shiny and some of it is shiny. How would I fix that, right? So this has gloss, medium, and, no, that's gloss, medium, and varnish. Though I could do, I could do any of these varnishes over it, right? So say I wanted this all to be matte. Yeah. Right? Now, in general, don't shake your varnish, but these varnishes sometimes have their... Settling issues? It's settling issues. So if you shake your varnish... You get bubbles. You get, yeah, it turns into foam, which I got to tell you is the opposite of what you want out of a varnish. But you got to stir it. Generally, it's the best idea is to stir it. Yeah, and I'm just kind of, yeah, if I could open this up and stir it. That would be, the, or, or, yeah, because you really yeah. got to mix that up. That's It's the, just really, really unincorporated. It's just settled, yeah. Which is a problem that we it get. Happened, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to. You're going to go shake it up anyway. No, I'm going to do this. I don't want anyone to do this at home, and they'll copy me. Okay, so you're going to pop it open and stir so it? So sometimes in the experience, you've figured out some parameters under which you can <laughs> break rules and not pay. Yeah? So what are you working on? I'm I'm doing the low shake. So there's this weird shake that doesn't make bubbles. It's it's kind of like I go like this. Ah, and it stir you're stirring. It, you're yeah, it's like a stirring in the bottle. And you're just stirring it but up. But if you did it any differently than what I did... You would not get the result you want. Oh, so so even you got a little bubble there. Yeah, even I got a little bubble there. But I'm going to do a sponge application. So you guys often ask about um, how do I get it on. And sponge is one of the ways. This is really seriously like a 25 cent sponge brush. Now, I got a couple good questions coming in. So you're too. seeing me just apply this across here. I'm not going to go back and work areas that I already have. That's one of the ways we get clouding and varnish, is to go back and work semi... Work areas you've already touched? Yeah. Now, you will probably want to put your varnish to you the push side. push just a little bit. You're going to want to put your varnish to the side. Look, I'm getting bubbles here, but that's okay. I can just go, woo. Now, the, the, the trick to this is that once you get it on there, let it dry. Yep. Now it just then dries. then come back. Then see it later. Now, And let it dry long? flat. How long do you need to let it dry? It will tell you on each bottle, please follow the manufacturer's instructions on varnish. There isn't a one set of rules for varnish. They do not have a flat course. Each product has very specific parameters, has very specific behaviors, and all of the manufacturers of every varnish from automotive to the fine art industry will try to give you as much information about those parameters as they can. Now, Don was saying roll the bottle on the table. Is that a good? Is that another good way? That's of that could be another good way. Yeah. Sometimes the liquid text won't lift with the roll, but yes. What you just don't want to do is you don't want to agitate the liquid. You want to incorporate the liquid, but not agitate it. Yeah. Because so. it takes forever for those bubbles to get out. And I have to tell you, my mom's studio used to have to get bubbles out all the time. Yeah. She's like, work it out. Now, some quick. <laughs> so some questions on this. Um, yeah. How long do you need to? So do you need to? Uh, how long before you can store a varnish painting? 
you have to let it dry completely or can yeah. you okay, let it dry completely okay let it dry completely and it doesn't make it like impervious to ever sticking it really depends on what you finish it with like i've got this jug here of yeah. urethane we use that to seal giant outside objects you painted Outside objects, rigid objects. This is a rigid varnish. Yeah. So in varnishes, you have flexible varnishes, which you would use on canvases, mm -hmm. and rigid varnishes, which you could use on boards or rigid surfaces. Now, there's a so like here's a common crafting sealant. This is a finish. This is sealant. You could finish a product with this, but you couldn't do this on a canvas. We did that on the rocks. We could do that on rocks. It was fantastic on rocks. It reminded me a little bit of uh, pouring mediums mm -hmm. or string gel. But I have to tell you, if you want this finish on a canvas, you'd have to use string gel and a frosting spatula. Oh. Interesting little thing people don't know because you need to have flexibility. What you want out of your finish for an acrylic painting is you need to have it be flexible because acrylic painting is reactive to its world. And you need to have something that's, that, um, where was I going? <laughs> I'm not sure, but there's a couple of really good questions. Good. I'm going to answer some really good questions and have some coffee. Varnish <laughs> okay. day is a very tense day. The links are really on point, as is the playlist. Okay. So can you add water to varnish to thin it up? when? Yes, you some products, but not all products. You have to read the label. The label is your buddy. Okay. And, and I have to tell you this. Uh, okay. So seriously, other than going to a tech at a paint company like Liquitex or Golded, mm -hmm. right? Do not just walk into your art store and talk to an associate there and assume that they have any beat on this subject at all. Right. I'm just saying from just decades of, <laughs> of art, sometimes they're, they're totally on point, but it's a real iffy thing. And, and whereas, you know, if you get like an advice that this is the brightest red and maybe it's not technically the most <laughs> brightest red, that's not really going to hurt your painting. But that bad advice about a finishing product is the death of your painting. Mm -hmm. So the best place, and I've given you those links, the best place to ask those questions is from the manufacturers. If you have a Matisse varnish, yep. there is no better resource for information on that than Matisse. Gotcha. Okay. And, so, they, and they're going to share it with you because they don't want to mess up your painting. It's so bad for business. So, okay, 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 <laughs> so many questions. So many questions. Okay. okay. I'm going to answer them so, uh, it, it, uh, I've seen a couple of questions about how they, they painted paintings month to months ago. Mm -hmm. Can they still varnish it? Yeah. Is it, okay. So you is, just got to kind of try to clean it a little bit, like to sort of dust it. Make sure it's clean. What, yeah. do, you, what do you suggest doing to clean it? <sighs> okay. So I will, I, I, I will use a dusty rag, which is not correct. But I'm, you know, if somehow for some psycho reason my artwork ends up being important and somebody has to conserve it, let me just stay on video now. Gosh, guys, I'm sorry, <laughs> I really didn't I, call that and, one. And in, in, in the past, <laughs> what what I have done is a a, a lint-free cloth with a yeah. little bit of water to mildly wash it off, and and, and, and that is exactly wrong. Yeah, but probably, we do it. Probably, yeah. But I mean, it, it, because it drives the dirt into yeah. the thing, and so therefore you probably should do impacts it with, the. The, the perfection of the original intention the painting was, again, you wouldn't want Coons to do this because some museum has to deal with his artwork later. You don't want Chuck, you know, Close to do it or Andy Goldsworthy. I, I can probably do it. You can probably do it. Um, some people like that air can. Oh, you could air spray them. Yeah. yeah. So some people like an air can. So, yeah, the, there's varying degrees of acceptable to the right way. You can go right down to lick a Q-tip and yep. roll it all over the canvas, which is the correct way. So, I mean, yeah. It, <laughs> just... And just be aware that, you know, try not to get chemicals or anything on it. They could be reactive is, is the big thing. So just, mm -hmm. you know, mild, little bit of water, lint-free cloth. Don't, don't get crazy. Now, something like this, yeah. dude, is spray. You could air can, like an air hose or... No, no. I mean, when you, when you apply oh, the var varnish, varnish, it has to be spray varnish. Okay. Because look at all this. I'm going to show you something. Now, I think this is... Okay. Can you see how this is, like, flattening out? Oh, yeah. Right, and then it's going to be a flat finish. And right now it looks a little milky, but it will clear up. It might need a second coat. No, no, it just, it'll. No, it's good. Yeah. It just as it cures, it'll clear up. Now, real quick question. I'm going to sacrifice this. Okay, real quick question before you sacrifice that. Mm -hmm. Can you paint over varnish? Oh yes, meant to answer that question right off the bat. E conditionally. Again, conditionally. Is conditionally, this... you can paint over varnish. So varnish is a rigid sealant. It's not really a ground for painting. But, like, say you have a painting and you varnished it, especially if you varnished it with one of the Liquitex products. 
um, and, and, and not a removable varnish. But you can go over a little area, correct it, and then var- let it dry and then varnish over the top of that. And you, that will unify the seal. Which, which is one of the things that, that makes the Liquitex a more flexible tool, even though it's I think not... they all do that to some degree, but you yeah. really have to read each product. And, yeah. Every product, I mean, there's how many GAX? There's right. eight GAX. There's how many MSA? There's so many products, and each product is adapted to, there, there are varnishes for weather conditions mm-hmm. and temperature conditions. You can't necessarily use the same varnish in the Arctic cold of winter as you would in an Arizona summer. Right. Because yep. are your varnishes impacted by temperature? Yes, they absolutely are. I know this isn't a fun subject, but again, I gave you great links so you can be like, you know. And I have just slapped coats of this on stuff my whole life. And, and, we, we and actually, I'm about to do this here with a brush. But I'm going to show you what happens with the brush. And to, to kind of talk about the strength of this, we painted the outside of a box and shipped it. To, yeah. So this is a varnish brush. Yeah. It is soft. Right? So it's going to leave the least possible brush strokes. It's dedicated for this. Mm -hmm. There's brushes that they make for (laughs) varnishing. Right? So when I'm painting on here, do you see how it's art? It just already picked up a bunch of color on your brush. No, it didn't pick up any color. uh, That's just the stuff. Right? I'm getting pools in the painting. This is the issue with brushing on on high structure objects is they'll pull oh. into the cracks and you don't get a good even coat. You get these extra thick areas and then you're having to come in and work it. Another myth is that you should um, do your brush strokes necessarily in the direction. Um, you can, but to unify the finish of a painting, and guys, I'm like seriously experienced at this. And this is super challenging for me. And I have like one of the best varnish brushes on the market. And I'm getting a little pulling here and here. No, but I'm surviving it. Look at me surviving it. I need this to go right in water. And I don't have a cup of water. Oh, varnish can totally ruin your brushes. So don't use your painting brushes for your varnish. See how right here, I don't know if you can see. Mm, Can you guys see this pooling that's happening like right here? And there's some pooling here. And now I've got to go back through and try to brush it out. Right? It just is a problem. So that is why I'm very much like, let's spray varnish. You wash that out, sorry. That's why I'm very much like, let's spray varnish things that have a lot of texture. Do a few coats, you know, and because that's an area, especially if you're new at it, I mean, like, I've had decades, and I'm still going to have, like, poolings and ridges and all kinds of things on the piece. So that is just something to think about, and you can see that it's, and I have, like, again, a great varnish brush. A good varnish brush does not shed. A good varnish brush is soft. So... Varnish, like, one of the things that, I mean, I love this for how it varnishes. It's just, I've got a video on it. I really love it. It's great. It finishes the stuff off. And for the purposes of how I paint, it's a finish that I really like. Right? And I'm, again, not concerned about anyone coming back and correcting my finish. That would be something that's very important in those decisions that I'm making. Um, You know, woo, clean, clean. Did you soap soap? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you really want to rinse this out like many, many, many times. I just went times. directly and soaked it with soap, soapy stuff. Soapy and, soap? Yeah, the, the soapy brush soap. Cleaner. Brush cleaner. Use the brush cleaner on that. So, and for some of these, you'd have to use a solvent. And then you couldn't use synthetic brushes if you were using a solvent because the synthetic will, the synthetic brushes will me- melt in the solvent. And okay. Oh, it's such a thing. Oh, so. so can, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Because I want to recap a bunch of questions for okay. you. Okay. All right. So go yeah, ahead. You we go were talking it. about good varnish okay. brushes. So you just can't get a cheap brush that sheds on your canvas because nothing will ruin your finish more than a bunch of bristles. Yes. So it can be nice to have a dedicated brush, and you really should have a dedicated brush. But however, right, this Mm -hmm. is also a dedicated brush and is like 10 cents a brush, and you can get packages of these on. Yeah. 
So you can be like, I will have my beautiful varnish brush and I will brush my varnish. And it's really fun and I highly recommend it. But if you're like, yeah, budget says no, budget can be just fine with these. Okay. So all right, so that's all gonna, I'm saying. I'm going to drink gonna, some more coffee. We're, we're going we're to Sherpa Omnibus. And Sherpa we're going to do real, real, real quick, we're going to recap a bunch of questions. Okay. And then I have one last thing I have to tell. Oh, can okay. I tell them the one last yeah, thing yeah, and then sure, we'll do questions? Sure, sure. The other last thing that I must tell you about varnish, and we're going to make some mini vids about all these subjects next year, mm -hmm. is that finish. So a lot of people hate gloss varnish, not in a small way. It <laughs> makes the artwork uh, hard to photograph. It, it, if you have weird lighting in your house, it can make your painting more like a mirror that blinds you as you walk by. A lot of people hate it. Yeah. And so they want to do a matte or semi-gloss finish. Where they make a mistake on this is that they do all of the varnish with the matte, but do we remember about the opaqueness? That the matte is semi-opaque. So what you want to do if you're trying to get a matte finish is not do three coats of matte because you will cloud your painting and it will show like gangbusters if you're mm. doing like a silhouette or very dark colors. It will really ruin your piece. What you want to do is do three coats of gloss, high gloss finish, which are transparent, and then finish with matte. Oh, with one coat of matte. Yeah. And then you can get rid of that gloss, which I now have this dry, and you can see that it has completely gotten rid of the gloss. Oh, yeah, it has. The gloss is gone where the matte is. Nice and finished. Nice and finished. And that's why you don't just use matte. Interesting. Okay. So... This is really cool. So, so we're gonna recap. A whole, let's recap everything here that mm -hmm. we've gone over today because this is we got a lot of people who joined us and want to make sure that we get all this. So, and those people that just joined us, man, I made a playlist for you that you should watch. Yes. Right, and this is the information, like right down to how to like how to fix a clouded varnish. Right. You'd have to have real varnish on your painting to do it, but how to do it? Um, Michelle Thurberg's got that studio stuff. Like she really talks about how you finish a painting. There's uh, some really amazing paintings, and then links below you should read. Okay. In the description, for sure. Now, all right. So when doing, when approaching uh, doing this, should we spray or brush our varnish? Well, I think it's like what we said earlier. It depends on what you're doing. Um, I do most of my varnish brush because I have um, not textural. Most of my paintings are flat like this. They're not textural. Right. So I can brush those on. But if I were painting highly textural, I would really want to spray. If I was getting, if I want a very flat, no brush stroke finish, I'm going to want to do a true varnish, not gloss medium and varnish, or not like um, that really cool gloppy triple thick. Right. Don't get something triple thick and be like, gosh, it's not leveling well. <laughs> <Right>. You know, <laughs> of course it's not. Um, you know, you're going to really want to read the back of those bottles. They're going to tell you what it does. They really don't want to trick you. All right, so the number one rule. Jump through hoops to inform you as much as they can. Yeah, read the bottle. Read Whatever. the bottle. So oh, that's your first read thing. Read the bottle, yeah. First thing is read the bottle. Now, then use appropriate safety measures. Use appropriate safety measures. Right. Whatever the bottle says, trust the bottle. It's not kidding. Your, your varnish will unify, is that right? Your varnish unifies the painting. It deepens the color, it protects, and it unifies. Some of these varnishes have UV protectants. That would let you put your, your painting in, like, the Arizona sun for 100 years. So it protects them, too. Protects them. Okay. Sometimes, depending on the bottle, it's an isolation coat. Sometimes it's an isolation coat. So isolation coats can't be removed. Right. And they protect the painting, the acrylic painting underneath, from the removal of the varnish process above. There's a bunch of information on justpaint.org about how to do an archivally correct varnish. Mm -hmm. Fantastic stuff. There is no better information about that. I'm um, next year make some happy mini vids, just covering that. But okay. I mean, that's my opinion. Is it's pretty on point. Now that we, we should put two to three coats of varnish. I tend to do two to three coats of a finish. Okay, they just to give your protect. But read the bottle. Read the bottle. Okay. And if it says wait six hours, wait a full six. What about brushes and varnish? Can you recap um, that? On brushes and varnish. Mm -hmm. You definitely, definitely um, want a brush that is soft, uh -huh. that's dedicated. In other words, you're not painting with it and varnishing with it um, and isn't shedding. But like I said earlier, I have my beautiful, gorgeous, insanely cool, 
ultimate varnish. <laughs> Look at this. It even says ultimate, and it really is the ultimate varnish, right? It's, it's just the nice little one inch does small canvases beautifully, ultimate varnish. Ratchet. However, that also does it. That also does it. So, you know, what your budget can afford. Best materials. Get the right materials, which I would rather you get one of these sponges than a terrible brush that was going to shed. Yes. Yes. Because the, the sponges won't hurt you. The, the brush that sheds will. But, you know, the, uh, the good brush gets into a lot more of the... Little... Yeah, the good brush is like an insanely fun thing. And I love it. And I'm not sorry I have it at all. <laughs> <laughs> So, I wouldn't, like, go over to another artist kit and be like, oh, I see you don't have the ultimate varnish brush. If no. they were sponging, I'd just recognize that they made a very good decision for their budget. Now, how long should you wait between painting and varnishing? I meant to answer that right at the beginning. Very important question. So, um, painting needs to cure. And on a painting like this that has a very flat surface, I wait a few days. Okay. I have gotten away from with varnishing stuff, like, within hours, but don't. Gotcha. Don't get away with stuff. Right? Like, I think I've varnished the DeFranco box with the glass medium and varnish because we had to get it out. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, that that stuff cured and made it through the mail is just a testimony to the indestructible nature of gloss medium and varnish. Yeah. Right? Because so, really, I painted a painting, I put it on a cardboard box, and I gave it to the U.S. Post Office, and it arrived unscathed. <laughs> so, just saying. So, it's, it's I mean... <laughs> It's, it's some lizard skin is what it is. It's some lizard skin. It's awesome. I wasn't going to get it off the box, though. No. But right. that's, that's what Not you want. Not restoring it. It's, it's, but it's good, good for what it does. It, yeah. It's now, great for what it does. If DeFranco should... ends up being pain, famous like long term and that box ends up being a thing, yeah, I'm sorry to the museum that has to deal with it. <laughs> sorry. I did it on cardboard. <laughs> so you can use any large brush you want, but it should be specific for varnishing. I would keep my brush dedicated to varnish because varnish can hot ruin a brush. Okay. Right. Um, some varnishes are toxic to some types of brushes. So this is this is what it is like. This has to be spray applied. Yeah. So you have to read. So it goes back to read the labels. Yeah. And I can't even be in the room where that stuff is being put on anything. And, and you need to check like a lot of people will be like, can I use a car varnish on my painting? No. You I mean, like, may, you, you, you maybe, this but is you where you shouldn't. Experiment. This is where you can't tell any artist that you can't do anything because it is all possible. And you will get an effect whether you intend for that effect or not yeah. is the question. So, right. you, and, and when we write those people, oh, and resin. Is resin a finish for a painting? Is resin a finish? <sighs> wow. So this is real hot in art right now is to finish your painting with resin. So what I'll say right now is uh, here's some basic resin guides. Don't put it on a canvas, guys, because canvases are... Flexible. Flexible, and it'll crack your resin, obviously. But beyond that, how long till your resin yellows? I worry about pieces that are sold to collectors that have resin on them. Because resin yellows. Because resin... I mean, like, I wonder if the collector will even get a lifetime out of the work of art. Right. Um, there are companies all the time coming up saying we have non-yellowing resin, but whenever I talk to resin experts, people that make resin, they look at me like I'm just talking about Bigfoot and Yetis and unicorns all living in a magic meadow. And, and, and yeah, because there's some, there's some rough science behind that and that it, it, it's that if it's a resin, it, there's just some chemistry there. So, so maybe they'll work the yellowing thing out and maybe they have worked the yellowing thing out. I, what I'm going to say is... As an artist, uh, proceed at your own risk. Do some on research. On the resin thing. Yeah. Don't not proceed, just proceed at your own risk. And make sure you do your research, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, Mod Podge is not a varnish. Uh, Elmer's glue is not an anything for paint. <laughs> Elmer's glue is not an anything ever for acrylic paint. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a polyvinyl glue. It's very water-soluble. Yeah. So and now you've got something that's, if, if you were to say, put it into your acrylic paint, you've now made your acrylic paint not only temperature sensitive, but also sensitive to moisture. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. So and not for that. It's a brilliant product. Love the Elmer's company. They're one of my favorite companies but Mod Podge Earth. and Elmer's glue are not finishes, but they can be And they'll be tell used. you that. They'll be like, no, please don't seal your artwork in our stuff. But if you're doing, if you're doing creative craft stuff, it is totally valid for, for craft for experimentation. All for uses, all of the uses, yeah. the bazillion uses that Mod Podge is designed for. It's a brilliant company. I love them. They have a brilliant help desk, and they also make a varnish specific. They have a row of products. Spray one. It's yeah. a good one. 
lots. Of, so yeah, again, good varnish. Just be aware that you know there's no hard fast rule, but when you start experimenting with adding products that aren't designed to go with your acrylic products, you then get, you're gonna get some results. You get some unexpected <laughs> results, and you have to be aware of what yeah. those are. That's yeah. all it is. That's all it is. Read read the bottle. Yeah. Call the company. They'll help. Like Mod Podge, they have an incredible help desk. Elmer has an incredible Crayola. Yeah. is helpful yes so you know whatever fun crazy project that you're kind of like cooking up just know that they have a help desk that will probably very honestly answer I, the mod pod talked to me for like an hour yeah and, and, and if you have a They're question fantastic. the other way is you can go the other direction too is if you have a question about using an additive with your paint you can also call the paint company mm -hmm. and oftentimes they have a re an answer because they've dealt with a lot of these things before yeah because artists are a creative, we are, what are we? We're creative. And there's a lot of facts on the website. We're not so. rule followers no. as a group. You it's tell us, please, don't add Elmer's glue to your paint. And we're like, but are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> because I'm thinking there's a way and some sand and I got some bird nest here. Uh, and I got this plan. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, and the paint company is like, huh. Like, well, you could tell I don't, you don't want to tell a great artist to not take their bottle of glue and their bird nest and their paint and create the next most important installation. You wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to deter them for that. So they're very used to handling that yeah, so in a respectful manner. Which is, you, you talk about the, uh, ar, you know, the ar archivalness of it. Yeah. The, They'll just you know, give you the information you need. Like, well, that's a very interesting project. And this is about the amount of time you can expect that to exist before yeah. catastrophic failure. <laughs> and still, so just tell you the information you need as an artist. They'll be like, "Yeah, All right." So we, Ness I, and glue and paint, awesome. No, I'm just thinking of that one lady at that know, one installation. Awesome. I know. Just, <laughs> but uh, going back to our, our varnishes. So uh, back. Uh, so if you use a pouring medium, do you need to varnish? Kim, yes. Kim Sim would like to know. Yeah, and you still need to varnish because Kim, the pouring medium isn't a finish; it's a medium, and mediums are thermal plastic polymers gotcha okay and so therefore we'll be subject to all of the things that thermal plastic polymers are subject to but like so say i've got a pouring medium because i'm trying to fake resin right i want to fake resin without resin and i might do string gel and i pour that and i wait the ang anxious 12 days of drying to see if it unclouds or not which is always fun <laughs> Then once I'm sure it's fully cured, I would probably go through and varnish it after that. And that would look like I used resin, but I will have not used any resin. And my painting will be archival. Now, Kim has, wants to know if a 15-year-old painting can be varnished. If, if it has, okay, so here's old art or art you don't know the providence of. Providence is the history of a painting. So you ha you found a painting, you don't know a painting. I have included the CIC's contact information down there <laughs> for these really challenging questions. Um, but basically the older painting is you don't know what the finish is and you guys know how you can't paint enamel over oil? No, but what well, does Like that in mean? your house, you can't paint enamel over oil paints. Oh, okay, sure, like right? on your well, kitchen. Well, acrylic sure. is definitely a more aggressive cousin of problems to that. And so oh. say you have a painting, you don't know if it was oil or not, because mm -hmm. you're not supposed to paint acrylics over oils, and you don't know how it was finished or in any way, now you have a series of conservation problems. And gotcha. in that, you do need to get, a, you know, if you care, like if you're like, I don't know, I just got this garage sale, I'm going to paint, a, I'm going to paint the Death Star on it. Just paint the Death Star, it's fine. It'll work out or it won't work out. But if you are trying to put together a show of work that you collected from resale shops that you are altering to create a modern statement like say the most famous artist likes to do then you do have to worry about the finishes the providence of the painting how these products will react mm -hmm. so just just like it and listen i have to tell you context because like especially when you do craft fairs and shows like there will always be artists who are like you're doing your little thing like you found some garage cell paintings and you put some death stars on them and you're having a blast and they're going to come up and they're going to be sitting there and they're going to do this one and have a whole bunch of opinions they're going to follow this pose be ready right context are you trying to hang in the louvre yeah if you're not trying to hang in the louvre so similar okay so this, so sophie has a similar don't question worry about she's got a basketball that she's painted and Ooh. wants to seal it Ooh. well you, know? you need a, a sealant that was flexible and also uh you'd have to have an area that could hold it so you'd have to like seal a bunch of it, but have like some of it unsealed that held it. 
and then rotate it over when it was cured and then seal that other side. Would you, would you, what, what do you think about that, the, the Liquitex stuff? Yeah. I think I, I, me, if I had a basketball that I painted and I was sealing, yeah, I know cinnamon, would you I would grab this. <laughs> she would, she would, yeah. Cause I, now I've used that on dashboards of my truck. Worked pretty good. It's, it's like one of these, it's a really cool multi tool. And, and by the way, this is not necessarily the, the best finishing products on the planet. They're just the ones that I know. They're right for the application that we're using them yeah, for. Yeah, for how I, how I varnish, how I can varnish. Right. MSAs, for you guys who come in like golden, blah, blah, blah. No, you guys are right. Totally true. <laughs> Everything <laughs> yeah. you're about to say is totally true. I totally agree. Breathe. <laughs> I just can't necessarily use everything. So they're, but they're, they're saying we, we've, had a, we've, we've had a crowd of people in here. We've had way I hope this over, was helpful. Yeah, we've had way over 200 people. I know um, the playlist and the links below are life-changing. Like, if you mm -hmm. guys get a painting from a relative and you want to know about protecting it, sealing it, changing it, altering it, blah, 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 Canadian Institute, you know, conservation. Mm -hmm. Right there. Linked it. You know, uh, you can contact Golden Paint. You can contact you can contact paint companies and ask them questions. They like artists. They're funny like that. They like us. Do they? Yes, they <laughs> do. All the paint companies like us. <laughs> you know, because we're so helpful at keeping them in business. <laughs> my, 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 ah, I've lost my mouse over here. You know, and every, and every, 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 you know, just, and you can, you can be like, you can treat it like a doctor's thing. One thing I do sometimes, if I have a very complicated question, mm -hmm. I will get multiple opinions. You're allowed to do that. They don't talk to each other, so they don't know that you asked like five of them. <laughs> they don't know. Maybe I think that they don't know. Maybe they actually do all talk to each other. <laughs> They're like, that's Sherpa. Did she ask you too? Yeah, she asked me too. <laughs> she didn't even take my advice. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that would be weird. Get an email tonight from a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> Varnished. So stressful. See, and this is like as it continues to dry, it just continues to matte. But you can see that it has, especially over black, when you use a matte finish, it creates an almost clouded feel, in my opinion. Hmm. And I prefer a gloss on it. It's just my two cents. But that's preference. And well, the reason you have all these choices is so you can just follow your little preference down any little rabbit hole you feel like. Well, despite me losing some of my mouse control, Are we good? They, they have asked that you would do a little dance because this okay. is the last, this is our last show. Oh, wait, I got to tell them. Oh, okay. The seventh, we're coming back and guess what that's going to be? What's it's that going to be? It's going to be about turning in your pairs and what the next quest will be. Oh. So uh, here's your hint for the next quest theme. There's going to be a little bam. There's going to be a little heat. A little heat? A little Ooh. heat. So all you pairs, get ready. And if you're just joining the quest now, guys, there was no time frame for this. There was no like, you know, do it in a particular order. This was a very kind of esoteric art journey where we just shared some information. Um, next year, it's being really reconceived and revamped. We're taking all the best stuff from what we got from this quest. And then maybe not redo doing some of the weirder things that we had going on <laughs> like I know what let's have lava <laughs> with some weird quests and we're gonna actually have a more trackable plan and everything so I think you're gonna find that if you did the pairs you're gonna really love what's next which I'm not telling you what it is but you're gonna love it it's gonna add to you and you could start with what's next if you even hadn't done the pairs it's genius oh yeah because you know you learn from your experiences and you guys have been incredible teachers to me you've been amazing teachers to me don't start your pairs until you meet with us uh, next Thursday. Because mm -hmm. next Thursday is you're going to hear about how you're going to finish that quest and what we're going to be opening with shortly. Ooh. Okay. I hope you're excited. I am. I'm pretty excited. So Some of you guys have been through like every one. <laughs> you were like, I got it. I know it. I can varnish. I can gloss now. I use my gel. Psh, psh. And I'm gonna have to revert to my uh, my manual beat engine here because I mean, my uh, we uh, my, my my Mac my my uh, my Mac mouse broke. So we have to say I love having you guys with us. We had a, we've had a a really good year of like playing and there goes cinnamon just dancing away. Who's gonna be here Friday? I think we're gonna have a lot of people Facebook. here. Facebook, meet us on Facebook Friday. Yeah. And it's gonna blow your mind. Giving away a painting. Yeah. 
<laughs> Do the bell. I don't know what the bell is, but... <laughs> You know, guys, we love having you guys hang I'll out. I'll dab with for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my daughter I did that. I'm forbidden to dab for any reason. Are you? Yeah. I'm too uncool. That's Which fine. is completely fine because sh- that's true. But I was too uncool at 16. So. <laughs> so, guys, we appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with us. We love seeing you. And we're going to see you again real soon now, yeah? We're going to do this, uh... <laughs> Sin has gone crazy. So tell everybody how much you love them. I love you guys so much. Please come by Facebook Friday. Come play. And we'll see you Saturday. Yeah? For the black dress. The black dress. All right, guys. See you later. Mm-hmm.